semiconductors. There's a bunch of different kinds. I'm only going to talk about two at the moment because they're the most popular, I think. Uh, the first is diode. A diode is an electric component with very low resistance to current flow in one direction and very high resistance in the other. It basically behaves like a check valve. In this, uh, this isn't plumbing, but it's the same concept. This valve, uh, it hinges here, and this whole part is on that hinge. So if water comes this way, well, the hinge will just go open like that, and the water will keep flowing. But if the water goes this way, um, then this will just snap shut, and the water won't be able to go anywhere. The diode has a similar function. In fact, it's almost exactly the same. This is what it looks like here. And I'm going to draw two of them. One facing in the opposite direction of the other one. So, in this circuit, we have current flowing out of the battery this way. And this diode, because the arrow is pointing, pointing down, the current is going to keep flowing. And this light bulb is going to brighten up. But here, we meet to the diode, and it's going the wrong way, so the resistance will be very high, and the light bulb will not light up. So, to summarize, diodes allow electricity to flow in one direction, but not the other. It's pretty simple. Not quite as simple when considerably more simple than the transistors. With a couple of different uh, pictures of them over here on this side. These are all transistors. I got one from two. So they come in many different shapes and sizes. Basically they're like an electric switch. They have uh, three different terminals. Terminals. Uh, this is a terminal here. It's basically the ends, and there are three of them. So it's not just like the electricity goes one end, goes in one end, and comes out the other. In fact, it's a lot, a uh, lot more complicated than that. They have three different. The three parts are uh, named the base, collector, and emitter. E and I could try to explain it myself, but I'm going to use a YouTube video to do that because I think it, uh, it could do it way better than I could ever could. The transistor is like an electronic valve that can be used as an amplifier or a switch. It can control a large current flowing through two regions of a semiconductor crystal, like silicon, with a small current applied to a middle region. There are many kinds of transistors. Typical is the bipolar, which has three layers an input layer, a control layer, and an output layer. The layers are either n-type material, which conducts negative charges, or p-type material, which conducts positive charges. The layers are arranged like a sandwich in an NPN or PNP configuration. The individual layers are formed by treating pure silicon with trace amounts of impurities. Adding boron will create n-type material, phosphorus p-type material, N-type material will have a surplus of electrons, whereas P-type material will have a lack. P-type material has a surplus of electron holes and is therefore positive. The silicon crystal is called a semiconductor because it will only conduct a small amount of current unless a change occurs at the junctions of the layers. In bipolar transistors, the input layer is called the emitter, the control layer the base, and the output layer the collector. When a current is applied to the emitter of an NPN transistor, electrons readily cross over to the p-type base, filling the electron holes. But when these holes are filled, the resulting negative charge repels further electrons that would come from the emitter. The transistor does not conduct. But when a small positive current is applied to the base, it will produce additional holes that will, in turn, allow more electrons to come from the emitter and pass through the base to the collector. Adding more or fewer holes into the base with positive current 
allows more or less current flow from emitter to collector, like a throttle controlling the speed of an engine. Because the emitter to collector current flow is up to several hundred times greater than the emitter to base current, the transistor makes a powerful amplifier. Hopefully that helped make transistors uh, make a little more sense. The confusing thing that I find is that the emitter is actually the input and the collector is the output. Put. Um, which seems a little backwards to me, but maybe not to the people who invented it, obviously. So how this works is if you have some uh, some voltage going in there, um, nothing's going to happen, even if you have the ground here. So it, it won't, it, the current won't flow. If you put another voltage here, and it can be a very small voltage, depending on the transistor, Suddenly, you'll change the, the properties of the, of the semiconductor so that the current can actually flow all the way through the circuit. I'm going to show you a few um, applications of the transistor and the diode right now. Okay, so, first one here, going back to diodes for a minute. This component is generating a signal, which is oscillating back and forth, as you can see by these arrows on either side of everything. And this light, as you can see, is turning on and off as the signal reverses. But these diodes are only allowing the current to go in one direction, you see the lights go on and off um, at the same time, and they can't, they can't be on at the same time because these diodes are both facing in the opposite facing in the opposite direction. Um, another way to look at this is oh my um, here we have again a signal generator with some resistors and this light which is only being very dimly lit unfortunately but it's still you can see being lit on and off but the arrows are going in the same direction. What's changing is the diode which the current is flowing through, and then the, the which side of the circuit it's going to. Um, the current, as you can see, is going up and down, but never below zero, like it did up here. Here it went, the, 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 the current of the signal generator is always going positive and a negative um, 100 milliamps, it looks like, by the graph. But over here, it's always staying above, above zero. Okay, now to the transistor. We have nine volts always coming through this light bulb, and then zero volts over here. Here we have the transistor itself, with the base, the emitter, and the collector side. And if we slowly increase the voltage, oh, there we go. With only 800 millivolts, that's 0.8 volts. Um, that's enough to complete this circuit and turn on the light bulb. So here we see the transistor acting like a switch. We see it again over here with another signal generator. Constant 9 volt power to the lamp. But the signal generator is going into the base of this transistor here. And so this graph is measuring the current across the light bulb, and whenever this uh, signal generator goes over a certain voltage, I guess it's probably 0.8 volts, um, positive volts, then this circuit can be completed, and the light turns on and off. Okay, hopefully this all makes sense. One final thing I'd like to mention is, to, as you, yeah, in the video, there were two different kinds of transistors. One was the NPN transistor, which I've been using, and the other is the PNP transistor. Since the base collector and emitter are a little different on a PNP transistor, I would just stick with the NPN, because it's a little bit simpler.